For weeks, historic wildfires have been raging in the western United States. Dozens have died, homes have been reduced to ash, large swaths of land have been turned to black and barren wastelands, and major cities have been blanketed in a thick orange haze. The scary part is that wildfire season is really just beginning out west. By the end of the season, hundreds, if not thousands, more homes will surely be lost. But did you know that losses from wildfires can often be prevented with the right precautionary measures? And if you think that the reason homes burn down in wildfires is most often because they're overcome by a racing wall of flames, you might be surprised to learn the truth. Welcome to Learn Something New by NFPA Journal. In the media and in films and television, wildfires are often described or portrayed in terms that suggest they bulldoze their way across land, turning everything in their path to ash and dust. In reality, experts have known for quite a while now that that isn't usually the way they burn down homes. Researchers were first clued into this when they noticed that some homes would burn down during wildfires despite being located blocks away from the footprint of the fire. An educational short film produced by NFPA in 2001 explains this further. It features Jack Cohen, a well-known wildfire scientist who has done extensive research on wildfires for the U.S. Forest Service. What my investigations are telling me is that more than half the time the big crown fires aren't igniting these structures. It's something else. It's the little things. Those little things Cohen is referencing are embers, small pieces of burning debris that are spit from wildfires. In wind, they can travel distances over a mile. It's hard to say exactly what percentage of homes lost to wildfires catch fire from embers versus radiant heat or flames, but researchers from the Insurance Institute for Business and Home Safety have said that it could be as much as 90%. Knowing that your home is most likely to ignite during a wildfire from windblown embers, the task of protecting it from loss actually becomes a little less daunting. Here with me now to discuss some of the steps homeowners can take to protect their properties is Michelle Steinberg, director of NFPA's Wildfire Division. Um, when we talk about embers and uh, specifically home ignition from embers during wildfires, what areas are typically most vulnerable to this? Sure. So when we're talking about embers, these are the little pieces of burning material that are coming out of the wildfire or uh, from the vegetation. They can be really tiny. They can be fairly large pieces of, say, like bark or trees, and that's being carried by the wind. So if you live in an area, if you've ever had to do any cleanup around your home, you see where the wind will blow leaves or pine needles or debris um, into your gutters or into corners around your house. Um, this is exactly where the embers are going to go. And the problem with an ember we think of it as this little thing. Uh, it's like snow. One snowflake, no big deal. A big pile, <laughs> a bigger deal. So when the embers pile up on these, you know, in these corners, on flat surfaces like decks, um, into your gutters, into complicated roof lines, they will sit there and smolder. And if there's anything for them to alight or ignite, they will. And uh, that's really the areas that you need to look at. Okay. And, you know, I think, I think there might be a misconception out there among among a lot of homeowners who think, well, you know, I would need a lot of time or money to fix uh, mm -hmm. some of these problematic areas. Is that necessarily true, or is there are there things that are quick and easy that everyone could be doing to make their home more wildfire resistant? Right. So what we usually tell people, because both uh, both because it kind of breaks this problem into smaller pieces, but it's also really effective, is start with your house. So look at your house itself. Um, you know, obviously having a good roof is a big benefit, but even if your roof is a little older, patching any um, holes or cracks, keeping those gutters cleared out, um, looking at your siding, making sure there's no openings, uh, you know, broken window or a hole in a screen, these kind of um, Taking care of that kind of simple housekeeping will help. And then moving out, even within five feet of your home, as I mentioned, those embers like to pile up. If you've got 
um, wood mulch, say, or bark mulch, um, you don't want that right in that zero to five feet uh, to your foundation or any, you know, your decks or your porches. You want to clear that out, rake that back out. And that's really simple. That's a couple of days, maybe on a weekend that you can do some projects around your home, getting rid of any, you know, heavy, heavy shrubbery or dead material that's around the house. You know, you, you bought a really great thing at the garden center this spring and it didn't make it. Get rid of it because it's just going to catch embers and be a potential problem to your home. Okay. Um, and so where can people go to learn more about this, Michelle? Well, um, our site from via NFPA, it's the easiest way to go is firewise.org. We'll bring you into just a world of resources about the individual things you can do to prepare your property, just starting on the weekend, uh, doing those simple things, all the way up to how to work with your neighbors and start uh, working on a Firewise uh, community concept. Thanks for watching. If you like these Learn Something New videos, please let us know by leaving us a comment. Like this video, share it with your friends, and be sure to subscribe to NFPA's YouTube channel for more content like this. Thank you.